We're going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 3, and we will read verse 7. 1 Samuel chapter 3, and we will read verse 7. This has been very helpful to me in my life. I hope it will be helpful to some people out there. A lot of people are trying to find God's will, right? How to find God's will. Some of you are working in a job, studying in school, concerned about the next phase you're going to go to in life. Maybe you're at that point about which college you're going to go to, about what am I supposed to do next for Jesus Christ? What can I do to help out the church? Uh, am I called to preach? Am I called to teach? Et cetera, et cetera. What kind of job? Uh, how do I find a wife? How do I find a husband? What to do to take care of my children? You know, yada, yada, yada. This is what everyone's seeking in life. If you're a Christian who wants to serve God, how to find God's will. So I've been through that a uh, long time, and I'll be honest with you, I'm still doing that right now. You might think that I'm settled, I'm done, but trust me, no, this has been going on for years. Uh, I wish God would show me his will soon. But the thing is, is that all of us go through this in life. So how to find God's will. There are several methods I'm going to give to you that I hope will be helpful, all right? There are several steps. One is to read the Bible. You might say, why, Pastor? Because if you want God to tell you what to do, God, God telling you with his word, God giving his word to you on what to do, how are you going to find it if he doesn't do it directly? My friend, you already have his word Amen. right here. See, so read the Bible. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 3, and we will read verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. See that? A lot of people don't know what God wants in their lives. But how would he know? Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. See that? It's when the word of the Lord's revealed. Now look at verse 19. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. So notice right here, Samuel, as he was growing up, he knew what to do in the will of God because God's words kept going through him. He kept applying the words. Verse 21, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So notice right here, the Lord appeared to Samuel. Samuel knew the Lord finally. By how? By his word. The Bible is the word of God. Amen? Amen. So how are you going to find God's will is you got to read the Bible. That's why I've known of missionaries who were wondering if they were called to preach and teach in a foreign country area. And how they found out God's will was through reading the Bible. And then when they read the Bible, they found out, oh, this is where I'm called to be. So I've known many missionaries who've done that. All right, we're going to look at uh, Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10, and we will read verse 12. Daniel chapter 10, and we will read verse 12. So if Bible reading, you find God's will, what do you think is going to be obvious as well to find God's will? It's going to be prayer, right? You've got to pray. Look, if you want God's will, you've got to ask Him. You've got to tell Him specifically what you're confused about. And when you do that, the Lord's going to reveal to you on what to do. Now look at Daniel chapter 10, and we will read verses 12 through 14. Verses 12 through 14. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. So notice here, God, he's been hearing Daniel's prayers all this time. Now, Daniel, he prayed for a long time, and it's tempting. Now, listen to me now, because some of you are going to get depressed, going to get worried, and rush ahead the will of God, and demand an answer now, and God just never seen. What you need to understand is that God did hear your prayers, okay? But even though he heard your prayers, it wasn't his timing yet to show you. But trust me, he heard every word that you said, and he knows what he's doing. Keep reading. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Wow, twenty-one days. Below Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. So now God, at verse 14, 
has Daniel understanding what he's saying. And many times we want to understand God. God, why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? But look at verse 13. It took 20, um, 21 days. See? God will do that at a moment of time. So, you, so this is important to understand. Make time to pray and be patient. If you don't do that, the easiest way to get outside of God's will, and I've seen many Bible believers mess up because they rush ahead. This is something that... This is a fleshy thing everyone has. And I don't care how spiritual you are or if you're a newborn believer. I see this with every single person. It's impatience, impatience. That's why they're going to shoot off their mouth what they want to say. That's why they're going to do something that they want to do. You know why? Because of impatience, okay? Impatience. I know a lot of things that I want to teach, and I'll go, ooh, I'm the first one to teach something like this. But you know what? I had to learn, I had to learn patience, okay? You know why? Because the greatest way to mess up your life is impatience. Impatience is going outside of God's will, you got to understand. Because it's not his timetable yet, and he didn't even tell you to do that yet, or tell you what to do. You were just so impatient that you just had to do it. Boy, that will preach, amen. Look at Romans 8, Romans chapter 8. That's a sermon right there. The, Number one thing I see with mankind, their problem, one of the number one things is impatience. Impatience. That's why we have to have technology. That's the reason why we have to have vehicles. You know why? We're such impatient people. We want fast, 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 fast. Right now, right now, right now. Look at Romans chapter 8 and we will read verse 16. Romans chapter 8 and we will read verse 16. Another thing is called inner convictions by the Spirit. Inner convictions by the Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will convict you in a certain preaching, in a certain teaching, or in the middle of your Bible reading, or you'll see something in a missions trip. And then through that, the Holy Spirit may be convicting you about, hey, you know, I think that you're called to do this. See? And we're going to compare that with John chapter 16 and verse 13 as well. John 16 and verse 13. But let's read Romans 8 first. The Bible says right here, the Spirit itself. Do you all have the inward spirit in you? If you do, then notice, beareth witness with our spirit. See that? Whatever your spirit is feeling inside, you'd be surprised. The Holy Spirit will sink as well to tell you something. That we are the children of God. Let's also look at John chapter 16. John chapter 16. And we will read verse 13. John chapter 16. And we will read verse 13. The Spirit will guide you into what? All truth. All truth. So we can be at peace with our spirit on how the Holy Spirit leads us. you got to realize this. If your heart is sincere, and I mean genuinely sincere, where you... Uh, wipe out all of your uh, selfishness, arrogance, and pride, if that is wiped out and completely humble and submissive to the Holy Spirit, you've got nothing to fear if what you do is wrong. Now, I know that feeling because I always make a big deal. I always get worried. Oh, man, I wonder if I said it the right way, done the right way, this decision is the right thing. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm sure I admit that I made mistakes. But I can't harp on those things and think that I'm outside the will of God and I'm suffering. No, the Lord knew my weaknesses. If my heart was sincere and honest, even if I make mistakes, God will bless it, honor, and take care of it. Now, you should remember that. If you don't remember that, then you're going to have a guilt trip and paranoia in the future. We're going to look at John 16, 13. The Bible says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. See that? Now look at Romans chapter 8. Romans 8 and Philippians 2. Romans chapter 8. And we will look at Philippians chapter 2. I will repeat again. Romans 8 and Philippians chapter 2. Another thing, how you can find the will of God is through circumstances. Circumstances. You got to realize this. Nothing is a coincidence with God. He deliberately let those things happen in your life to teach you something. See that? 
So that's why it's very important to be very conscious and aware of your surroundings. And ask yourself this, I wonder why this happened. You know, maybe God's trying to teach me something. See that? And when you do that, then you can see, you know, maybe God called me to do this. Because he deliberately set these things to give you an opportunity or to show you something. Why do you believe that? Because Romans chapter 8, verse 28, what does it say? And we know how many things? All things. See, everything that happened in your life work together for good to them that love God. Now compare that with Philippians 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to what? Will and to do his good pleasure. So whatever work God has done for good, you got to realize this. That's him trying to direct you through his will. That's why anything that happens in life should be paid attention to. Let's also look at Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Okay, this is the pride of people. The pride of people, especially on the internet. It's really bad. But you got to realize this. If you want to seek God's will, you got to seek the advice from experienced people. You will be safe when you abide by the, the people who went through some... The people who went through something similar like you before, their advice, when you abide by it, will be very helpful. Now let's look at Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14. Oh, but no, you know more Bible than them, you think. Oh no, you pray more, you read the Bible more than they do. Oh no, you, you're a better Christian than they do, so they don't know what they're talking about. Boom, then you're going to get outside of God's will. Look at Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14. The Bible reads right here, Where no counsel is, the people what? Fall. But in the... Oh, so you see that? Where no counsel is, the people fall. So if all you're doing is you yourself picking and choosing whatever video you want to watch and there's no counselor to you, you're in big trouble, don't you think? You're going to fall. But look at this. But in the multitude, see that multitude, multitude of counselors, there is what? Safety. You want to be safe? Not just one or two, but multitude of counselors. Then you're going to be safe. All right, let's look at number six. Let's look at number six. Look at Judges chapter six. Judges chapter six. We will read verse 37. Judges chapter six. And we will read verse 37. Fleecing is another way. Basically testing the Lord. Well, we call it fleecing. So basically... If you want to find out God's will in your life, you can tell him as a test, see? Lord, um, if this is your will, then can you please have this and this taken care of? And by doing that, then I'll know that will be your will. Now, you got to be very specific. You can't just do it really abstract and random. Make it very specific, very sure why you can't do that thing that you're afraid of doing. You might say, Lord, I'm afraid that if I do this, then this bad thing's going to happen, that bad thing's going to happen. And I can't blame anybody but myself because I made an unwise decision. So until you can take care of that thing and that thing for me, Lord, then I'll know that it'll be your will. So you've got to be very specific. Look at Judges chapter 6, verse 37. The Bible says, Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. So Gideon said, Lord, if you make the fleece wet and the ground around it dry, then I'll know it's your will for me to conquer the enemies, to save Israel. Look at verse 38. And it was so, for he rose up early on the morrow and thrust the fleece together and wring the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. Look at that. The Lord answered his prayer on that. We're going to look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Don't say, Lord, you know, uh, I need to see your will. So please show me something right here if you called me to China. And then you pass by a restaurant where it says China Express. And then you go, Lord, thank you. I'm called to be at China. Look, you don't want to do something like that, okay? So you got to be very specific. 
All right, very specific and wise with how the Lord's going to answer your fleecing. Look at Colossians 1 verse 9. This is very important and this is what many people lack. All right? And that's why the unsaved lost people survive in their life and not save people because they lack this thing. It's called wisdom. All right? People just gung-ho and do it without thinking about the consequences. Look at Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled the knowledge of his what? Will. So how do you know much about his will? In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. All right? I noticed a lot of people have lacked this, and that was the greatest cause for many of them to ruin the will of God permanently. And these missionaries have messed up in the mission field. These pastors have quit the ministry after one or two years. I mean, it's a mess because they lacked wisdom. Okay, here's a rule of thumb that helped me immensely. This also helps you to prepare for whatever Satan's going to attack you in. Remember today's preaching? That was kind of helpful. So this line is kind of synonymous to it. This is like a foolproof thing almost. It's helpful. In order to make wise decisions, one must consider the worst possibilities that can happen from making that decision. When you think that, then you can be more prepared when the bad things happen. See, You can also predict what can happen and you will be ready for that and you have an answer and a solution to take care of that. See? So you got to realize the worst possibilities that can happen from making the decision. If you just do it without thinking that, then what's going to happen is, I guarantee you this, I promise you this, you're not going to, God can't trust you with the responsibility of leadership. You know why? Because as leadership, they have to be responsible and accountable for the consequences of goes on. To take that kind of position, a position of leadership and authority is in a position of accountability of the consequences. But people don't want to take consequences for their actions. So they resort to the internet to flee. So that, because why? They are, they are not accountable enough to take care of the consequences of their ministry. 1 Thessalonians 5, this is the most important verse. We'll close right here. I apologize for the lateness. We're going to close it right here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. I thought that I could finish this in 10 minutes, but because it's so important, this thing that has to do with your life and future, I kind of yacked off my mouth on it. But all of this goes to 1 Thessalonians 5.21, because there are people who just go by some of these steps or one of these steps and etc., and then it could be something wrong, all right? Like for example, let's say that I went on a missions trip to North Korea, and then I had a burden because so many people were deceived. They didn't even know the name of Jesus. And I have a grief for them. And I'm like, you know what? I got to give up San Jose Bible Baptist Church. You know, I'm going to leave it to Brother Stan, you know, have him pastor. And I'm going to go as a missionary to North Korea because the Lord spoke upon my heart where my, the spirit within me was grieved that these people have not heard the name of Jesus. I need to be, I need to plant a church over there. And then I go over there and I ruin my life and I ruin this ministry here and I ruin, the, <laughs> I ruin this ministry here and I ruin the ministry in North Korea. You see that? That's what's going to happen. So you can't just go by this. What these things must do is that you've got to prove all. Okay? These things have to be tested, proven, all things. The above methods, you got to understand, they could vary or they could even interchange. Or all of them can come together in a balanced format, you got to realize. But the point is this. The point is, is that there are some people who have just read the Bible and they realize their calling. All right? It worked with them. Other people, it was by the circumstances in life and they found the will of God and that's why they went for it. Other people through fleecing, they found the will of God and they went for it. It worked for them, but it didn't work for me. Look, I tried this one and I was really desperate too. I was doing it for a couple of months. And no, the Lord would never do that. I said, this is really important, God. You got to do it by this due date. And God's like, oh, due date? All right. Nope. Like that. So I was doing it 
this, and that didn't, definitely didn't work for me. I was confused by this one. I didn't know which one was right, which one was wrong with my decisions. All I knew was I was sincere. I used all the wisdom juice that I can get and the advice of experienced people, and I'm like, which one, which one, which one? And then reading the Bible and doing prayer, and then what, would, what helped me? What helped me was this, is that you got to prove them all out. Until you prove them all out, then you can find out which one is the correct path in your life. That's why you got to understand this. Everyone's path is different in finding God's will in their life. That's very important to understand. Some people could, are just called to be a missionary just within a week, and they're called. Other people took three years, and then they're called to be a missionary. See, everyone has different ways of finding God's will. Prove all things, and what do you do? Hold fast that which is good. See, by testing all these things, you find which one is right for you, and whatever's right, then you stick to it. So you got to prove it out. you got to prove it out. You can't just blindly go by it. Prove it out, and then trust me, I'm going to tell you this so you don't get scared. If you do all these things, you can't go wrong. Does that mean you will not make mistakes? No, you will make mistakes. And that's important to remember because you're human. You will make mistakes. However, the Lord will take care of it. And the Lord knows what he's doing. And all you can do is walk by faith and not by sight.